motion, please, to approve our agenda. I'd like to make one change. If you don't mind, I'd like to move item 13 up on our agenda so that it comes right after our reports. If that's okay, that's what I'd like to do. I move to approve the agenda without change. Okay, is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. That motion carries. Uh, any customers to be heard? Should we approve the consent agenda first? Well, we should. <laughs> Could I have a motion concerning the consent agenda, please? Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. How's that, Casey? Um, Thank you. Any customers to be heard? None. Any recognitions, William? No, sir. Thank you. I like that. Any old business? No. John. Oh, John. Uh, old business regarding last May 23rd, there was some discussion about uh, getting the documents for the power plant completed. Uh, would you give an update if that has been done at we this point? Yeah, either Travis or Casey was raising her hand. We can give you a, an update. Sure. Perfect. Uh, Travis Schmidt, Electrical Engineering Manager. Um, the documents between the City of Moorhead, or the resolutions between the City of Moorhead and MPS are currently um, with John Shockley, and he's reviewing those. Um, they were sent over, was it last, last week or the week before? Tuesday. Last Tuesday, he was provided everything. Um, as for the, um, the final report to the MPCA, uh, Mark Johnson is still working on that, um, and he has not sent that over to the MPCA. He did provide a draft copy to Sarah Weir, which is one of John Shockley's assistants. Okay, as, have we taken a look at it? Um, no, we have not provided that to the commission yet. That raises an interesting question. Why do we have third parties examining it before we do? Very good question. I um, thought so. Uh, she had requested it from, uh, through Mark Johnson. Mark uh, asked if I was okay with providing it to Sarah. Um, it's basically the draft form of the, of the document of what is going to be sent to the MPCA. Okay. I'm a, I'm a wee bit concerned with third parties reviewing mm -hmm. what is otherwise a proprietary document before we review it. Sure. In all honesty. Um, do you, would you want us to provide it to you guys as well for I review? would think that would be appropriate Kay. before we I will have, third parties. I will get Mark to send me that draft and I can forward it to you guys. Okay, thank you. Do we need to wait for the next commission meeting or can we just get it by email? Yeah, we'll then? forward it to you by email. Okay. Please do. Okay. Yep. Okay. Casey, any anything other, else? Any other questions, old business-wise? Casey, was gonna, are you going to make further comment, Casey? No, we got everything. Okay. okay. Anything further? So there's nothing standing in the way right now, right? It's just a matter of getting the formality through? Yep. Cool. Yep. Nice job. <coughs> Dave had his Dave? hand up. Ken? Pardon me? I thought Dave had his hand up. Do you have your hand up? Okay. I think he was scratching his nose. Uh, oh, I was just pointing to John. John says, it? Yes, he does. And he's very good at this old business. <laughs> Keeps us on track. Let's go to reports. Members of the City Council. Heidi, it's nice to see you. Well, it's good to be here. Good to see all of you as well. Uh, I don't believe I have anything to report. I do have some um, concerns and some comments that I'll bring up under item 13. Okay. Nothing further? That's it? Okay. Members of the Public Service Commission, anything to report? <coughs> okay. William? Um, I only have one item that's on the uh, uh, written portion, and that's number two. Uh, Pactiv is now an interruptible service customer, and it just goes to show uh, how those customers are looking to cut costs wherever they can. Um, Dennis and I met with them uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they uh, are under new plant management. They're looking for different ways where they can cut costs, and they're going to be working with us to uh, shed their loads when we have a peak period. And that saves us money, which saves them money, and, and it's all win-win. So. But it's just an interesting development from Pactive standpoint. And they really do have to like shut lines down when that happens. So they'll work around our peak and our dispatchers give them a call and kind of schedule it on the fly when we when they can shut down. And they can choose not to shut down if they've got 
something real important that they're doing, they just know that they'll probably pay a little bit more in their energy, so. What are the projected savings? Uh, I'm not sure, I know what the projected savings are. That's a good question, I, I, it's not on here. Um, in fact, in the meeting, we probably don't know what the projected savings really are just yet. They'll probably take a little bit of uh, uh, work on their part to figure out how much they can shut off when, they, when we have a peak period. Any questions for Bill? Um, John, you have a question? Yes, I do. I think at the end of your report, Bill, you have this um, report from Hildai Inc. regarding your certification. Oh, yes. Could That's you a give a little bit more explanation of what we are doing yeah. with them and why we're using them versus any of our, like our accountants. Our admin and finance manager, Nancy Lund, can do that. Nancy Lund, admin and finance manager. We've engaged Hilde Incorporated to do an actuarial study for us as required by GASB, which is Governmental Accounting Standards Board 45. So it's something that our auditors do not use or would not perform for us. So they do the actual actuar actuarial study and they've done it all the years that we've been required to do that. They do a nice job of it. It doesn't cost a lot. Um, the one comment on that, we were on a three-year rotation for having that study done every three years. GASB has now changed the standard that we need to report to and we'll be doing that study now every two years. That information is used as an input into our audited financials and it basically is just an accrual entry, so a liability placed onto our books because we, um, have retirees in our health insurance, so it's a pooling together of those higher cost retirees insurance um, with our younger pool of employees also. So that's what the other post-employment post -employment benefits are. So it's just a reallocation of those future health care costs. So it's just health care, not pension or retirement accounts? Correct, <laughs> yep, yep. Thank you. And they've, they've done a nice job and you know all they have to do is go in and update that study rather than starting over again. So they'll be doing that for us every two years. We, we would hope they would continue that. Good. Does that answer your question? Thank you, Nancy. Mm -hmm. one, one more uh, item. Since you brought up an actuarial study, it uh, jogged my memory and something I should report to you. Uh, the city manager, Chris Volkers, and I met last Friday, talked about a number of uh, MPS items um, 20, 21st Street, uh, space at City Hall, uh, but we did talk a little bit about the billing system issue that we've got, and they are uh, having an actuarial come and look at our cost of service study, which we're perfectly fine with, and then that firm will take a look at our methodology and talk through what, uh, you know, the split should be as far as how we separate MPS and city you know, charges on the billing system. So, um, but we had a good meeting, uh, city manager and I, and uh, working through issues, and I'm sure we'll be bringing those up from time to time. Any questions? That brings us down to item 13, uh, which we moved up on the agenda, and that's to approve the final <coughs> artwork for Oakport Water Tower recoding project and task order number six with KLM Engineering. Chris, do you want to identify yourself and explain everything to us? Sure. Chris Knutson, Water Division Manager. Um, so this is the final artwork tower approval uh, for painting the Oakport Water Tower. Uh, it's been about a year long process and really kind of come to this item. Um, one of the key points for tonight, we do have to make a decision the tower is gonna to get painted in August, so they're anxiously awaiting in terms of uh, timeline what our decision tonight will be. Um, so that's kind of the first um, point I wanted to make. Um, it's been about a year long public input process and at the May 9th meeting, um, the two artists that uh, were selected through the um, Tower Art Subcommittee uh, were directed to merge their artwork into a final design. Um, I believe Sue and Kim are here they can speak to that process a little bit. Um, Casey, I believe, was gonna pull up the final design. 
It was also notified through MCAM, if you could pull up that uh, commission item with the final design. Um, the final design was published in the paper. It was also disseminated, <coughs> excuse me, disseminated to Oakport residents via uh, postcards and then advertised in the extra as well. Um, so we did try to really get the word out in terms of public input, had, an, had a variety of public input meetings and uh, um, I can kind of, uh, the good news is in terms of a grant, um, the city was selected for a grant so it's no net cost to the city or MPS. The cost to add the artwork to the tower is $4,650. They received a $10,000 grant of which 9,000 would go to the artwork. Um, I think they're still working on kind of what the excess grant funds would be if the artwork was selected. If we decide not to select the artwork tonight, um, we'll have to kind of go through another process to, to bring it back to something else. But um, I can hand it off to Sue, I think. Now is the artwork that was selected, as I understand it, the, what appears on the drawing of the tower uh, at 20, about 23 feet tall, uh, is, is that the, the final drawing? Because I see we also have the submittal number three in front of us as well, and submittal four. So which, which is the final? The oh, design okay, you see on the monitor is in front of you. Okay. Um, Sue Leggett, Arts and Culture Commissioner, and um, sort of leading the charge on this project. Um, <clears throat> at our last conversation, um, you chose, I believe it was design three and four. Those were by Jack Lund and Stephen Dorsey. Um, if you remember, Jack's design was of the heron, the cattails and the grass, and then Stephen's design was um, the more graphic of the two with the, um, the moorhead, the text of the word moorhead and um, the round circle, the field rose, the river, and the yomkomst in the background. So the two artists met with me. Um, we talked about some of the limitations and the objections and that or the objectives that we had moving forward. Um, this is the final design they came up with. They were very enthusiastic. They loved the idea of collaborating. Um, they came up with this conclusion relatively quickly. Um, and so we've had time to send it off to the contractor and to the painting company um, to kind of go back and forth. Um, we've had conversations about size and location on the tower and where it stands right now. Um, we're, we're placing it sort of at a northwest angle, um, so it sh hopefully will be visible from Highway 75 and maybe I-29 when you're coming down from the north. Um, the rest of the tower will remain the blue and um, several reasons for doing that, one of which is at one of our open houses, um, there was some concern expressed by an Oak Park resident that he wanted it to be as simple and as minimal so it just blended away as much as possible. So, um, and also um, something that was expressed at this meeting last time was the concern about um, Oakport residents having Moorhead, you know, right in their backyard. So um, we thought that by having it one time on the tower facing Northwest um, would address those issues and keep us within budget. Um, we are within budget. We're below budget and the plan, should it be approved, um, we are hoping to submit a reallocation request to LRAC so that the remaining funds can go primarily towards hosting some type of um, unveiling open house celebration thing for the Oakport residents predominantly and just sort of, you know, give them this tower and um, you know, possibly announce any future water tower plans. Uh, the design is going to be, because of the shape of the tower, from top to bottom, the design is going to be about 16 feet. Um, that allows us to, um, that's as large as we can go without there being significant distortion or um, equipment limitations by the painting company with having to round up to the top of the bowl. If I might, I received a number of calls on this very subject, uh, particularly after the article appeared in the local newspaper. Yeah, and, and there appeared to me at least, if my recollection is anywhere near accurate, some misconceptions in that article. 
not the least of which was that we set aside $15,000 for the purpose of coming up with this artwork. Uh, I don't believe that was our intent or what was done. Uh, I think we were willing to set aside whatever monies would have cost us to simply put the word Moorhead on the side of the tower. Uh, the implication in the article was inaccurate. And uh, so people said at a time when we have rising rates and other things, why are we, why are we doing that? So I tried to set that particular record straight. Uh, and uh, I think, Sue, you've answered my other questions on the, on the same matter. I, I was wondering why we were only putting on one side of the tower. But one of the things that is a, a bit concerning to me, and I'm not too sure, we didn't bring it up at our last meeting, but um, in the article, I don't know if it was the artist or whomever indicated that this, it looks like a logo, and he, he does logos, and it would concern me that without input from the council at least, that I don't think that we should be adopting something that may be perceived to be a logo on behalf of the city of Moorhead. And I just, I just raised that because it, it certainly is a logo and it's got a, a statement uh, on it. Um, so I don't know how we react to that. And I just, I just raised that, that question. Oh, Heidi. Thanks, Ken. Uh, Ken, I spoke with some council members and some, some residents um, regarding this issue and, and actually the, the logo idea did come up and people felt that it was logo-like and that the council should have a say in whether or not we want a new Moorhead logo and what that would, what that would look like. Uh, so there were, the, and there, there were, there are concerns that it looks too much like a, a new logo. Um, and not just a new logo on a water tower, but a water tower that's in Oakport. So that brings me to the next concern that I, that I f fielded, uh, which were concerns that there's too much Moorhead stuff on that water tower and not enough stuff that identifies Oakport. Uh, <coughs> c comments that I heard were, it's, it's neat, it's, it's, it's refreshing, um, it's eye-catching, perhaps on a different water tower, on the I-94 water tower, uh, because that kind of, you know, it, it captures Oakport a little bit with the heron and the, and the stream, but all the other stuff is Moorhead, and so perhaps that is better suited for a different water tower were some comments that I, that I heard today. But there are concerns out there. I just, I wanted to make sure I was here today to, to let you know that there are some people who, on the council as well as in the community that, have some concerns. I guess my gut reaction is that Oakport is in fact a part of Moorhead now. Yeah. It is. And uh, welcome to the fold. Uh, I would, I would, I, I mean, um, just to address that first issue, um, everything on the tower was about Oakport except the Yomkomst, the Huron, the wind turbines, the oak tree, the and that field rows and the river are all you know, I mean, the, the river could be all of Moorhead, but um, the field rows with the agriculture, the wind turbines are north, the heron, the cattails, and the oak tree are all part of, you know, the oak port. So um, with that in mind, we do, we, I do think it does address the oak port <coughs> aesthetics and, the, and what oak port is. Um, the other thing is the artists, when they were creating this, part of their conversation was if if for some reason or if there's the possibility that um, similar design could be done on the following towers, they would like to switch out the silhouettes um, to address every neighborhood. So around I-94, around Woodlawn, around South, South, South Moorhead, wherever the new tower is going. Um, so that was part of the conversation as well. So they did, they did try to address uh, Oakport and its um, unique characteristics. As far as the logo goes, I understand the concern. Um, if we think back to the last meeting, this was a combination of two designs that you chose to put together. Um, and this is how the artist chose to address that. I do, I do agree that it does, it can look like a logo and maybe that's part of an ongoing conversation, but it also is the way the artist chose to address the very circular 
um, tower, because the Oakport Tower is very round. So they wanted to have that round circle in the back and then incorporating the word Moorhead <coughs> into it in the similar aesthetic graphic. I, I, I personally don't want us to get too far down the road where we're talking about bringing in other water towers because if I remember correctly, there was a time when people on the commission were not entirely sure that they wanted any artwork whatsoever. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, David? Actually, uh, scroll, scroll back down again, would you, Casey? Um, one more. One more. Okay, that one. This one it was one of those that we were looking at earlier, and you know it, it is logo-y. Um, the, the difference that, that maybe uh, maybe we could eliminate some of the logo elements of it is, you know, the the new one now says your hometown, so it's a slogan. It it it, ha it has turned into a, a, a branding mechanism uh, almost more than art. And I, I I thought that our original intent was was to talk about. Um, art. Uh, art on the towers, but uh, you know, if if we don't get too carried away with with adopting logos that, that are semi-official or or whatever, and if it just simply said Moorhead, maybe we would eliminate some of the concerns. You know, take out the hometown reference. You know, take out life in, um, and 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 try to at least make it so that it. it if, if we need to say Moorhead on it, you know, say Moorhead. If if we want to say Oakport, say Oakport. But, you know, to, to me, months ago, a year ago, when we started this conversation, I think I was one of the folks that said, "Let's talk to the neighborhood," and and you know, I I realized we got some input. I don't think it was overwhelming, um, but but I I don't want to get into a thing where okay, it's either this or it's this or or it's you know, some other form that 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 people are, are perceiving that, that we're trying to drive a, a branding uh, campaign here mm -hmm. because that really wasn't the idea. The idea was art. Um, so I'm a little frustrated with it at this point because the, the press and 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 the, the, the media got way ahead of us on this. We hadn't even seen the artwork yet and then we were starting to see it in the paper. And 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 then I started to get the comments too about golly, it, it looks like a like a branding campaign as opposed to art on a water tower. So, so I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated for you guys because you've been working on it for so long. Um, you, you, the, the art by committee is so hard to, to work <laughs> anyway. Uh, and, right. and combining <laughs> the efforts of two people, I thought was a stretch. Anyway, well, but but if we can if we can come up with something that 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 doesn't appear to be stepping into other people's jurisdictions and and purviews and so forth, because. It isn't, it isn't for us to, to rebrand the community with, with, right. with what we're putting up on the water tower. And the artist did take, you know, because I was taking notes last time, we did take the comments that were mentioned last time about appreciating the graphics of this design along with the Oakport elements of the Heron design with the grass. And so when the two artists work together, the final design is what they felt yeah. brought those two together the best. Yeah. And I think that was an unintended consequence is that we're sitting now in a situation where we may have a more of a logo thing and I totally agree with you guys, we shouldn't be in the business of doing that. Mm -hmm. Say, Chris, let me just put you on the spot. Uh, I know the drop dead date for the decision is today, right? And I don't think, uh, anyway, uh, is there any leverage in that? And maybe the ultimate question is, um, should we wait with the water tower painting for a year and have a full-fledged decision to a discussion to have this thing taken care of? I know. I so I'll give that to you. I think we can wait a couple days at tops. Um, mm. but well, we, we could still paint it, paint the word Moorhead and slash or the logo a year from now, couldn't we? No, because you have to re-scaffold, right? Oh, we got to, I mean, it's a whole remobilization. Re yeah, so the contract, I mean, we, we have a contract out on it already that's approved. Um, so if we, let's just say we didn't do any artwork or something, the cost, Instead of four thousand, it could be forty. You know, it it, it could be su significantly elevated. So um, well, well, that so would be the concern about m mobilizing again. But I think we have a few days. But well, like since we since since the issue of whether or not this amounts to a logo is before us and somewhat before the members of the council now, because you've talked to some of the members of the council. To me, at least, we should get some input from the city council. I mean, I don't want us to run out there and adopt a logo uh, that the city council and city staff may say, whoa, 
we which was not the intent anyway. There were no plans at all. Yeah. Just coming from an art background, um, there's a couple of rules with logos. This is too many colors to be a logo. It has too fine details to be a logo. You want a logo to work at the size of a quarter and a basketball. Um, it has that logo look to it because it's so graphic and simplified and compact as opposed to like a, a band that would wrap all the way around the tower. So, you know, it is walking that line, but, and I'm, I'm you know, I'm not the dictator on this who's gonna, you know, demand that the artist make something a certain way. So this is and how they, this, this was their response well, to so. the comments from the last conversation. Heidi? If I could, if I could Perhaps, Scott, you'd like to, do you have any insight or input, any thoughts on, on uh, lo too logo-y, or do you think? Uh, You're just trying to sit in the back of the room, aren't you? Yeah, I, 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 For those of you who are at home, Mr. Hutchins is here, <laughs> and we'd certainly welcome your input, Mr. Hutchins. I saw you sneak in the back <laughs> Yes, <there>. I would. <laughs> <laughs> I know I shouldn't be getting up. You're always <laughs> welcome here, Scott. Come on down. I mean, I don't know what the process was when the when I don't know what the process was when the city adopted. <clears throat> right. What's so is this right adopt now. is this adopting a logo? Is it, are we okay? Is this not adopting a logo? How what was the process when we Do you remember yeah, do you remember that process, Scott? Uh, honestly, I I don't I don't recall the process of, of what the art was yeah. to, to, to look like or not look like at this issue of logo, uh, if it was something that was on the table early and apparently it was to avoid having it look that way, dealing with the parameters of the water tower and whatever else was available to us. I was aware that there was a cost implication and that, that's what I was tracking more closely was that we had to stay within some parameters of cost here and the utility didn't wish to bear any additional burden nor did the, nor did the city. Um, you know, it would, it would seem since no, both bodies aren't interested in going down the path of branding and local development, which is a whole other exercise in and of itself that would take additional years <laughs> to work through. Um, maybe the, the point that was raised, I think here by by uh, commissioners would be to, and I don't know what this does to the integrity of the artwork, but to eliminate, I think David, you raised it, the your hometown slogan. Uh, it, you know, the purpose of putting, there is a purpose to put the name of a city on its water tower. And then as I've heard Sue mentioned, it has multiple elements of Oakport, which as the chair mentioned is Moorhead uh, at this point in time, but still multiple elements of that environment, that area of the community. And, and I suspect too, as I think Sue is mentioning, or, or someone, if it were moved to I-94, it may reflect, you say there was a, a, a similar situation. Well, number one, maybe the water towers of a different different shape or size that demands a different kind of approach for artwork, but it might reflect the elements of that area, or if it was in Woodlawn, elements of that area. So, you know, it, it seems to sort of hold an intriguing promise for future years if there's, if this goes well and, and by all accounts and is accepted by the community and, and appreciated, maybe there's an opportunity to do some unique things which really then would move away from any intent or purpose of branding because nothing would be uniform. It would be unique in each and every area of the community. So. It may be to move on with the timeline that you have and the, the, uh, the fact of, of mobilizing multiple times is so expensive it really can't be considered. Simply eliminate the, the your hometown and, and see if that might satisfy. You know, I hate to say this on the record, Scott, but that's a good idea. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sue, what do you think of that? I, I think the artists would be okay with that. I think they, I mean, they're so excited about this and they collaborated so beautifully that getting rid of the your hometown versus not getting anything, um, I think they would well, be definitely for that. Well, we do appreciate that. your work. I hope you understand that. <laughs> it's Heidi, Heidi what, do you, what do you think if we did that? And I don't want to put you in a spot that maybe if we if we did that and send a send a version to every council member and s see hey, 
here's what we're thinking. If you guys okay with it, we go forward. I, I, I think council would appreciate that. I, I do uh, find it comforting that, Sue, what you had to say about how it's not a logo, I think that information would be helpful for, mm. for not just council members but other people to hear as well that why it wouldn't make, meet that criteria and then by eliminating the slogan, um, you know, I, think I, I, I think that might alleviate some concerns. The other option too, instead of having your hometown, it may be confusing for one tower but if, if it is something we decide to do moving forward, it could say Oakport and then the next one says whatever the nickname for the I-94 neighborhood is, and then the Woodlawn, you know. So it could be an identifier for the regions of Moorhead or the neighborhoods of Moorhead. I think the idea of putting Oakport on there is intriguing, but in, because right now it's so, the annexation is so new. However, in 20 years, is the annexation still gonna be that new? That's, right. yeah. Uh, so I think if it still said Moorhead, but then where it says your hometown, like Oakport, so it's a gotcha. neighborhood thing and not. You know, Sue, so looking at the screen right here though is, is, is kind of like looking at the tower at some distance. You don't see it. You don't see it. You, you, right. the, the your hometown part is just yeah. kind of gobbledy. Yeah, so, so the whole from top to bottom is 16 feet, so the <clears throat> your hometown is, I mean, approximately <clears throat> two and a half, three yeah. feet tall. Yeah. It's Chris, pretty you small. were on the committee, as right. was just pointed out a moment ago by Mr. Anderson. That's, uh, tr that's correct. So what kind of comments do you have? Um, I, I share your concern about the your hometown, and I was thinking exactly that, if we could remove that. Um, I don't think it looks like a logo. I just think it looks like we, we wanted to have more head on there. We have more head on the tower. Um, the design, as Sue pointed out, is limited in terms of its ability to be um, placed on the tower and not have to worry about wrapping it around and distorting the view. Um, I think it was a good process that we went through. The number of submissions that we had I thought was appropriate. And um, I'd really like to see this project move forward. I think we did a remarkable job securing funding. Um, and uh, thanks to Kim and Sue for working so hard and. Um, Chris for your guidance and Mark as well um, and so I, I would not be opposed to moving ahead if we could remove the um, your hometown on it I I think it's a good design Mr. Rogama yeah I need a little education here for it so Water towers in general, are they to advertise the community that they are in? Is that what the purpose is? Pretty much. So thinking really outside the box, is it a requirement to have Moorhead on a water tower? So you have the design instead of Moorhead, and you look at it and have instead of Moorhead large, your hometown. Because then you focus more on the design of the community. So is that really just just a really dumb idea, probably, but <laughs> from all the faces that I see out there, now I will, that you talk yourself out of that. I will, I will pass on that because of the response. I just thought I'd throw it out to see what people would think, and I got consensus that it's not a thought we want to pursue. Uh, it's, me? It was a, this has been one of our more intriguing conversations. I see we've got some other guests in the audience tonight. Did either one of you ladies have anything you wanted to comment on? Are you here for this issue? Okay. <laughs> I don't think that our hometown would be necessary. I like the Moorhead coming here. I got one of your postcards, and I was thinking that the design was so small that you wouldn't see it from any distance. But Sue informed me ahead of time that like the bird would be at least five feet high. So that's fairly good size. You should be able to see that from a distance. Um, so I guess I would go up maybe Okay. And leave out the your hometown. That's just not necessary. Okay. But I, I guess I'd like to see something on the reverse side too, like maybe just the Elmhurst on the other side, rather than the one side being totally bare. Yeah, I don't know how that decision was made that we'd 
you know, make part of it bare? Because I, I had anticipated it would be on both sides as well. I would say that the full design would not have to be on both sides. But it would be nice to have something on my side. <laughs> and I would be, I mean, the young comps design. So do you live out in that area? Oh, definitely. I'm, I'm about a block and a half from the water tower. And so you don't have a problem with uh, having a, some artwork on the water tower? No. Okay, good. It's good to hear. Can I get your name, please? Janice Ohm, A L M. Chris, you gonna throw some cold water on Mrs. Ohm's thoughts? Or? <laughs> no, we, we did look at logos on both sides. Um, the additional cost was $6,200 to add a logo on that other side, so it would put it over the grant amount by um, a little bit. So that was, and that and then the neighborhood concerns, I believe, were the, uh, intent to just put it on the one west facing side that was the that was the intent there behind doing that Heidi uh, thank you do we have uh, like for example on the i-94 tower is Moorhead is that design on both sides yeah it is yeah. so you're coming from every any direction you you're I mean that's the, that's the one thing that's just an identifier about. That's the one thing that's too bad about only having it on one side. Woodlawn is just on the far west facing side. Okay. Well, you should know where you are, right? <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> that, has been, that has been a problem in the past. Yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah, I'd like a motion. Uh, let's. Do you want to make it? Chris, you worked on it. Um, well, I, I guess I can. Um, I would move to approve the artwork with the removal of our hometown. Your hometown? Mm -hmm. I can't even see it. She can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> we were right. Um, as long as um, we can we can strike a deal with the uh, artists to, to do that, I would be in favor of of that motion. Uh, what? Are you adding the word Oakport where it says your hometown or leaving it blank? No, I'm leaving okay. it blank. Okay. Sorry. I've got a motion and a second. Chris? One, one thing I'd just like to add is a little bit of um, flexibility from staff perspective to address any cost implications that may come up as a, as a result of the change because the task order is specifically for the artwork. So I I may have a deduct or an adder of, I, it could be $1,000 here or there, but I just need a little bit of levity in terms of my approval so that I can move forward with the timing of the project. Okay, well, let's take care of this motion first, uh, unless Chris, unless you want to change that motion. No, I don't. Okay. Well? Are we discussing things, or are we? Well, we can still have questions. I have a motion in a second. I can call the vote, or we can discuss it. I have two questions. Okay. Uh, are we sure we don't want to put Oakport on? I, I know it's small, I know it's small, but would it be a, an acknowledgement of the recent annexation? Number one and number two, do we need any, should we involve council or are we, do you think we should be okay? I mean, we've heard from Scott, you know, I mean, he's the logo master. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I don't know that we would get um, full council input in just a matter of a couple days. There are a couple council members who are out of town um, so I, I, I don't know that you want to, you know, you know, wait it on, yep. on feedback from council. I, I do believe that Sue's information on how it's not a logo is helpful. So, I mean, I think that will alleviate some concerns that people were, well, is this an attempt at creating a new logo? Well, no, break open and we can justify that or, or, or explain that. You know, with Sue's information and her input, that was that was very helpful. Uh, and I think removing that your hometown is another one yeah. that really yeah, made a big difference. Yeah, the slogan. Yeah. I I just wanted to say that I would resist putting a neighborhood designation on one now and uh, lacking a strategy for the rest of them mm -hmm. and even knowledge of what the other ones would be labeled. You know, what, what are we going to call them? Encompass that in the artwork. You know, um, yeah, I, I I would really resist that and just. You know, if we're going to say Moorhead in this fashion, I like the idea that Sue brought up. You know, where maybe this is the template, uh, and and the, the the circle changes, mm -hmm. but but the the Moorhead 
font, you know, is, is, is kind of the driver. And then whatever it is that we do, you know, in the north and south might just be graphic as opposed to words. So, you know, but, but for this one, uh, I, would, I would just really resist having anything else on it, but, but Moorhead. It, I, I think it would seem less slogan -y, less logo-y. I'll pose a hypothetical to you, if I may. Sure. So you've heard our conversation, you've heard the input from the neighbors and from the artists and so forth. Do you feel comfortable if we were to vote to move forward on this? I think I have some additional information that I can share that would alleviate the concerns, yeah. Okay. Would you like to share that now or? Well, with the council. Oh, with the council? Yeah. Okay. Well, and I, didn't mean, I didn't mean that to sound like a Jeff Sessions No, question. no, I, that <laughs> I can share with the council as well as, uh, you know, some of the citizens that I had heard from and residents okay. and whatnot. Okay, good. So I've got a motion and a, a second. Uh, the only other, since you were bringing up points, or Ralph was, uh, any further discussion on logos on both sides? Like Mrs. Alm mentioned? Can, can we pay for, can we pay for that? <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's not within our, MPS it's not within, MPS. from my perspective, it's not within our approval because it's 6,200 plus the 4,650, right. which is over the grant amount. So if we, if we can do that, but It's MPS, over the grant amount, but we also said that we, would have sufficient funds that we would have paid out anyway to have the word Moorhead put on. Are you taking that into consideration? <coughs> That's taken into consideration. Okay. So those those funds have already been Expanded? incorporated in the okay. additional okay. 4650. So if we did that, it would come directly from MPS. Okay. So the cost of the logo is not 4650, it's 4650 plus the 15,000, whatever we had in there already? Correct, Got correct. Okay. Got are we satisfied with the direction that, that it faces? No, is is that who are we communicating with? Uh, with it face basically right at the river. It, is it, you said it would be I, visible I, from seventy five. From seventy five, or is it, is it facing west? It's facing west, so you, you'd see it coming. You're not going to see it from the interstate. Yeah, you'd, you'd <laughs> see it coming from County Road twenty, coming towards Oakport. You could see it very visibly from that side. Mm -hmm. It's. Honestly, from the east, in the summertime when trees are, you know, we have a lot of trees up there, you don't, you don't see it until you're almost right there. You don't see it from the south. Um, either. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I, unlike our engineers, those aren't necessarily a beautiful work of art. Uh, I'm, no reflection on the artwork. Yeah. Um, so I've got a motion and a second. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. That carried. Um, now, do you want another question about $1,000 if you had to use it? Yeah, I just, I just need a, a X plus or minus $1,000 on the 4650 just so in case there's any price implications on the change. The minus is guaranteed. Minus 1000 You got that. Well, you, <laughs> right there. I like that minus thing. That's not a problem. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Chris. We also need approval on task order number six with that, with some with some type of language like plus or minus a thousand dollars. So that's question. Um, you're you're well within the nine thousand dollar grant. So why would you you have up to, an approval up to nine thousand dollars, correct? Right, but task order six specifically is only in okay. the amount of forty six fifty. So I can't. Right. Okay. Although yeah, that. Yeah. Right, so, right. Right. so I could have a motion concerning Chris's request, please. I'd entertain that. I uh, so move whatever it was. Yep. Casey got it. <laughs> yep. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. All those in favor signify by uh, saying hold it. Hold hold it. it. Yeah, let's just make it a thousand. Five thousand six hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. Okay. Ralph. Ralph. Johnny seconded it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I called the question up? again. It's all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the same sign. That motion carries. Brings us down to item nine. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Sue. And uh, thank you for coming to our meeting. Thanks, yes, Kim. Uh, item nine is to approve the professional services with ESC engineering and task orders number one and two for electric model configuration and electric AutoCAD conversion to GIS. Who's speaking to this? Todd Copeland, introduce yourself, Todd. Todd Copeland, uh, GIS coordinator. 
So yeah, I uh, just want to give a little bit of background on, <clears throat> excuse me, on what uh, we're looking for tonight. So um, MPS, Moorhead Public Service, our geographic information system contains a lot of the electric uh, fiber and water uh, data geographically within our system. And just for Ralph's pleasure as well, it also contains our sludge ponds too. So just <laughs> wanted to throw that in there as well. <laughs> I know, I just, I just had to throw it in there. Just, just had to lighten it up a little bit, right? So <clears throat> in order for us to go through and, and complete the engineering analysis um, model that we're wanting to get done, uh, part of that process is we need to go through and complete the configuration of our network adapter software. That's the first phase is to go through and get that completed. Second part of it is we also need to go through and update about three years worth of uh, AutoCAD drawings, uh, get those converted into, into GIS. Um, we've since received uh, reasonable quotes from ESC Engineering to uh, complete both these projects. Um, the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, ESC has a good vast knowledge and understanding of, of the engineering analysis software that we use. They also have a good uh, background and understanding of uh, the geogra geographic, geospatial um, assets and in, in, uh, in, the, in the utility space as well that, that we're looking for. So uh, task order one essentially is going through and looking at uh, finalizing configuration for the network adapter software. And uh, part of this is essentially going through and, and completing that uh, configuration and, uh, excuse me, <coughs> lose my voice here a little bit. Uh, also providing uh, the, the testing for that, making sure that it's, it's uh, configured correctly and then finalizing and getting us the, the final uh, engineering analysis software uh, that we can use for um, our model uh, later on down the road. Yeah, thanks. <coughs> Struggling with a little bit of a cold here, so sorry. Task order two essentially is, is for doing the final conversion of our AutoCAD, uh, electric CAD updates to GIS. Uh, as mentioned earlier too, there's about three years worth of updates that were completed or that need to be completed or converted into, into GIS. So that process is essentially taking that data and, and going through and converting it into, into our GIS uh, format. Um, once that's completed, then we'd be able to go through and export all of our electric data out into our uh, engineering analysis software for use uh, with engineers to complete their, their engineering studies and such from there. So. Um, and any other uh, design needs that, that they would have. <clears throat> Both task orders, task order one, uh, estimated cost is around $15,000 to complete. Task order two is, is right around $20,000 to, to complete that work. Um, both of these here, we're going through and using the EJ, read this, EJ CDC uh, task order agreement. And uh, this is something that's been uh, reviewed and, and uh, by MPS uh, council and, and staff as well and has been used in the past uh, for this as well. Uh, this contract is, is good for a three-year period in case we do have some other engineering needs or, or a request uh, from ESC Engineering okay. as well. Any uh, questions for me on that? Any questions? Any comments? <coughs> Excuse me. Is it budgeted? It is, right? Yes, we do have this budgeted. Yep. Okay. Could I have a motion, please? I move to approve. <coughs> is there a second? Second. John Regala seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The same thing. Uh, item 10 uh, is to approve the summer voluntary watering restrictions. I don't know if this needs uh, a great deal of great deal of discussion. Uh, could I have a motion to approve our water restrictions? Yes, but I didn't want to discuss. Well, I'll second I move. his motion. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Discussion, Mr. Anderson. I, I want to discuss this because we never do. Um, and, and as I was reading it, uh, over the weekend, I, it, it occurred to me that it might be worthwhile to talk about water conservation, especially when it's voluntary. You know, there's no teeth in it. We do this every year, and then we never, we never look back. Um, and and I, I really wonder um, how relevant it is. I, I, I understand that we probably have statutes in the state of Minnesota that tell us that we're supposed to do this and so forth, but what are we doing? What are we really accomplishing? Because. I don't know of a lot of people in my neighborhood who pay any attention to odds and evens and, and, and such. And, and um, you, you know, we're having a heck of a rain now. We've had a bit of a spring drought, but I'm, I'm just really wondering how important this, this is and how important it is to our community. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you're, you're correct. Every year we approve it. It's part of our DNR, DNR water supply plan. 
So as we would progress into uh, more <clears throat> severe stages of a drought, different watering restrictions would kick in. Right. You know, it's just because we never really see those drought stages. We don't do the um, no lawn watering restriction. Yeah. We don't do we yeah. don't curtail industrial use. We don't do any of those activities. But um, in 2016, we actually resubmitted our uh, water supply plan. It's still under review, um, but it's that's the intent of doing the uh, voluntary water restrictions is to follow the uh, water supply plan. Um, it kind of falls in line with what we did in the 2012 rate study, where we have the conservation rates in place. We've had those in place for a while now, um, but. What, what's the impact to our neighbors to the north? If, if, if we don't conserve water, you know, it, it's, it's rolling by, we're taking out of it, you know, what we take and what we use from day to day, but uh, it just seems that to me that there's a bigger picture, but, and, and maybe, I'm, maybe I'm just fishing, but we do it every year, it, 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 it just doesn't seem to mean anything other than it, it sounds like the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yet the river rolls by and there's a lot of water that keeps on going and, and if we're watering our lawns with it, it eventually gets back into, into nature and, and is, is recycled again. So I just wanted to bring it up and see if it was worth further discussion. John? Do it every year? Well, I agree with Dave. A couple of points that I would like clarification on with us implementing this, I don't see anywhere in the report how we communicate that to the users. I see that we have a website that they can go to, but I don't know how that's advertised or communicated. Normally have a press release on the subject. Okay. We, so that's correct. It's maybe to align with Dave here, we may need to promote that or, or at least talk about conservation of water more than we have in the past to share that information with the users because as we are looking down the road, we're gonna have a huge expenditure to increase water. And if we can start the learning curve right now, hopefully we can maybe eliminate some of that cost because the demand isn't as high or whatever the case may be. So I, I would think that we wanna just be a little bit more active as how we share that information. Because if you look at the tips that are in there, they're, they're valuable and if people aren't aware of them, it, it doesn't do any purpose. So I would encourage somehow that we would yeah, implement I, I something. I think in the past we've done a press release virtually every year. So if you could think of some other possible ideas or whatever. Casey has some, some low cost ideas that we can do for okay. um, yep. social media, um, yep. bill, message. Okay, yep. okay. Good. How has water production been the last, I mean, in the, in the heat now? Yeah, so week? Dave mentioned it's been a pretty dry spring. Uh, um, we actually had the plant in the latter part of last week up to about 8 million gallons, which I haven't seen in my career at MPS since like 2000. So it's, it's pretty significant uh, plant production. And then we actually pumped about 7 million gallons a, um, on Friday, which is pretty, is pretty high amount. Normally this time of year we're doing about five and a half. So a pretty significant amount of water we're putting out the door. Um, really nice that we got that high service pump station project complete when we did. Uh, really helps our reliability in pumping uh, during those high peak uh, usage. And we're seeing a lot of usage on the south side. Um, so we'll be talking more about that in terms of a future water tower uh, in the very near future, but. And we get about 80% of the river right now? Uh, I, I don't know. It's more like 50%. Oh. Yeah, uh, the water quality in the river the last month or so has been very poor. So it's been very, very expensive water to treat. So while we're putting out a lot of water, we're using up just a, an excessive amount of chemical to treat what that water. What do you attribute that as? Are we, are we getting some more water out of Lake Traverse, or what's yeah, happening? It, it's poor water quality from White, White Rock Dam discharge from Lake Traverse. Okay, and they're not telling us in advance either? Are they, no. Have they ever changed no. that? No. <laughs> no. You know what it's, when it's there, and that's when the chemicals go in. Yeah. So I've got a motion here uh, in a second. Chris? How do we enforce this? At this stage, we don't. Uh, I, I think that would be the answer. When we get into mandatory water yeah. restrictions, then, then we would have So an there's an enforcement there's plan? A, there is a mechanism if we okay. get into mandatory. Okay. And, 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 yeah, and when we get into the mandatory. Water from the aquifer, excuse me for a second, but even when you get to that level, there is a priority uh, with who can draw water at what times if we get into those mandatory situations. 
but right now the enforcement is basically higher cost for the user. Correct, yeah, okay. that's the incentive. Right. Just the rate. Yeah. Right. Okay, can we call a question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. That motion carried. <laughs> Item 11 is to approve the supplemental agreement number one with Q3 contracting for 2017 street and lawn repairs project. Are you talking to this one too, Chris? Yep, I'll be talking to this one as well. <clears throat> so MPS-led uh, water main projects are well underway. Uh, we just wrapped up underground construction on 17th Street in between 20th and 24th Avenue in Moorhead um, South. We just started working the past week in River Shore Drive. Uh, many of you have noticed that underpass um, has been closed down and it'll be closed down for an additional two weeks. Uh, we're replacing water main in that area. Um, so we're, we're really working on getting water main replaced in a timely manner. We actually have to complete our underground work and our uh, restoration work by um, approximately August 1st for city mill and overlay projects to begin. So the interesting thing about this year as opposed to previous years is that this year MPS, instead of doing some spot restoration, um, we're actually gonna do four inch restoration instead of six inch restoration. So as part of those mill and overlay projects, um, we're gonna place less asphalt than we normally would during a water main replacement project. Why we wanna do that is because asphalt is extremely expensive and um, the city will actually pick up that top two inches of asphalt and that'll, they'll include that in their project costs, which they have. Um, but it does leave us with the responsibility of um, picking up that four inches of uh, replacement in those spot areas. So what we're proposing to do is actually use our existing street and lawn repair contract to complete that four inch restoration. Uh, folks in those neighborhoods and when we open up River Shore will notice that, yeah, when you drive over it, it's an uneven surface because they are two inches below grade. Um, but it's a significant cost savings to MPS. And so when the city begins their mill and overlay projects in August, Basically, they'll mill the rest of the street areas that we haven't disturbed and then place, um, you know, a, a new two-inch layer over the entire street section. Okay, so, so how are we going to communicate that to the, the residents who live in that area who are going to be driving over this and wondering why more public service left such a mess? Yeah, we just, I just placed, um, we just had placed some uneven pavement signs that'll be out on 17th Street. This work is actually scheduled to begin tomorrow. Um, if the weather uh, turns around in our favor. But um, there'll be uneven pavement signs on all the entryways into the streets so that residents will be aware. We'll send out, um, we do quite a bit of communication uh, as we go into neighborhoods. So we do postcards, we do calls. Um, we'll inform residents that the project is not complete. They're aware that the city mill and overlay project is coming. The city has actually started work in our project areas as well with some mud jacking of curb, some other things. So. There's been a lot of disturbance to those folks. They know that, you know, MPS isn't isn't done, but we'll communicate it formally as well. Yeah, yeah Chris, I think I think it's important that we communicate that that is a temporary yeah. fill. Then, uh, especially because once the work the workers clear away and so forth, and, and the street becomes theirs again, uh, without them being told that we're coming back. Correct. Uh, I think the phone's going to ring. So yeah. it, it, it would seem to me that a postcard or a letter to, you know, up and down that street to the mm -hmm. residences would, would be far better than just trying to assume that they understand we're Putting coming back. Putting up signs and say it's an uneven street, they'll know that. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. That's For, yeah, it just lets drivers who are unfamiliar know the, the hazard. Yeah. Again, just Chris, you were saying that you're thinking by the end of August the city project would be done then? Um, I. I believe so. I think their contract is open through mid-September, actually. Okay. Right. Um, but we've been working closely with the city in terms of coordination. One of the bigger pieces will be 24th Avenue near Sunmart. That's a whole, um, they're replacing the whole section there. So we're getting in there doing water main and then it's completely gonna be turn, you know, torn up. So that'll be really disturbing to that uh, area. Um, you have a motion concerning item 11, please. I move to approve item 11. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. That carries. Uh, item 12 is our water main replacement projects for the year. It has nothing to do with sludge route. Um, do we need any discussion on this? No. Can I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Okay, if it just. Item 14, amend the policy on training and development. Uh, this Tom, is a are you talking to this? I can speak to this one. This is a policy of the commissions. Uh, these policies were done uh, quite a few years ago. This one talks about uh, training and development of MPS employees and commissioners. What we've done to this policy is basically added um, other stakeholders that, that the commission may want to have educated on some of the utility issues that we deal with. Um, specifically, we've got uh, Moorhead City Council representatives and the City of Moorhead's economic development staff. In the past, we have offered economic development staff to go to uh, training and development um, conferences or workshops, that type of thing. Uh, we do have interest from our two council liaisons to go to a leadership training opportunity in Sioux Falls put on by our power supplier, Missouri River Energy Services. It's a good event and I would encourage other commissioners to go to that as well. Um, and uh, this policy update just allows the general manager to approve those. Otherwise, they were really outside of the policy and we'd have to do them on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, any discussion, any questions? John. Um, shame on me, but I guess this is the first time that this has been communicated to me as a commissioner that there was training dollars available. So I don't know what Chris has been made aware of, but can you maybe share a little bit more details of uh, what budget is and what it's to be really more detailed of what can be used for? Um, I don't know what the, I don't know if Nancy knows the size of the budget. I'd have to get back to you on that one. Um, what it's used for is basically, you know, uh, MPS staff goes to conferences, uh, either national or regional, uh, maybe even local at some point, uh, training. Um, you know, so I mean, it's really the budget is for commissioners and employees to get training. And uh, so do you recommend to the commissioners what they should go to, or do we come to you and make a request of what we would like to go to? Um, either way, I mean, I think Casey has on the agenda most times yeah. at the very end some opportunities that you might, we don't highlight those as much as we probably should, but uh, typically Casey puts them on the bottom of the agenda. Um, the ones that we tend to have commissioners go to include American Water Works Association. They have real good meetings, uh, uh, American Public Power. Uh, has good meetings. We send and commissioners to the public policymakers workshop on more than one occasion. Uh, yep, and then Missouri River Energy Services is the one that the two council uh, reps are interested in. And Missouri River is actually kind of picking it up a bit because there's a new crop of employees and commissioners and council people that are uh, getting into the utility industry and they, they're doing a nice job of doing some, you know, I won't call it I mean, elementary uh, education on utilities and, and as well as leadership too. So this is a leadership conference that they're, they're doing in September. Maybe, maybe as far as from my perspective, Bill, if you, I, I've seen obviously, obviously the meeting of opportunities, mm -hmm. but if you're seeing something that would be uh, a, maybe a higher priority for having somebody attend, you may want to bring that to the commission and see. I think if you watch the public power magazine that comes out it normally has a number of those seminars as well yeah i think the ones that are very good for the commissioners to go to and i think commissioner anderson talked about it <clears throat> maybe a few months ago was you, you went to the legislative one and both the state legislative and the national legislative ones are probably ones that we should be more involved in than maybe we have in the past and uh those would be high on the list of priorities because you are very impactful to the elected officials that, uh, that operate in the national and the state level, even more so than staff. So we provide you with information, you educate them on uh, the issues that are concerning to us. The other ones are more for your uh, development per se and in, in what it is to operate an electric utility or a water utility, so. Okay. But we'll, we'll, we'll highlight those. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Could I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion. Is there a second? 
Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 That brings us down to the close of uh, the meeting for an executive session. Uh, the meeting will now be closed for executive session as permitted by Minnesota statutes, section 13D05, subdivision 3C, to discuss transactions involving parcel number 5830701110 in the city of Moorhead. I would suspect that there may be action taken at the conclusion of the executive session. Could I have a motion, please, to go into closed session? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Right. We're now in closed session. Thank you. Thank you for your input, Scott. Yes. Well, we've got a quorum right now. What? I can't hear you. They're still talking. Hold on. I said, I've got a quorum. Rick? You do? No, I, you want to wait for everybody because it, you look so handsome out here, pretty and all that. You and I? I did not think that water color thing was so good. I didn't either. What? I mean, I think it's I think it's going to look great. I think it'll look nice. I do too. I still think, to be honest, I still think it should be on both sides. I, I do, do too. too. But I mean, we can't we, afford it, so. Well. <laughs> that wasn't a decision we made. Can you negotiate better with the water tower painter people? The water tower painter people. <laughs> Where's Regala? <laughs> Tell John to get out yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> John, wake up, get out of here. And tell me he's growling. So is he. <laughs> you don't need me here. Yeah, we do. You have to you're the handsome man. You're, 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 you're the quorum. Don't be so coy. Can I have a motion, please, to go back into open session? So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a motion to adjourn. So move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. <laughs> How's that, Casey? Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yes. I just never keep track of these rules. That's fine.